Okay, so the next two proofs I want to do all in one fell swoop and because they're very, very similar to each other. So that we can kind of do both of them in the same proof, but just slightly change it at the very end. So we have two languages here, um, which are zeros, ones, then zeros of the form some number of zeros, some number of ones. And in the first case, the number of zeros at the end has to be uh, the number of zeros in the beginning plus the number of ones at the end. And the second one is the product of the number of zeros and ones in the beginning. Okay, and I wanna show that both of these are not regular. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a language L uh, prime, or actually I'm gonna change it to three, which is gonna be generalizing both of these and then we'll uh, hoist it back to the original two and we'll see how. So I'm gonna have zero to the n, one to the n, and then zero to the f, some function of m and n. And then the first example is the function is just adding the two and the second language is just multiplying the two. And then we'll, we'll see if and only if it's in L3 and then we'll see what the function is at the end. Okay, so this is m and, oops, and n at least zero. Okay, so then let's suppose uh, L3 were regular, then that means there exists a pumping constant P, I'm just gonna shorthand it, for there's a pumping constant P for L3. So then now we gotta pick a string that is of length at least P and is in that language. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just borrow uh, this by substituting p in for the exponents. And it turns out that there are other parameters that will work here too for the first two languages, but it turns out that if you just substitute p, it's really easy. So let's choose w equal to 0 to the p, 1 to the p, and then 0 to the f, some function, the function f on p and p, just substituting m and n for p or p for those two. So this is definitely of length at least p. Well, this function can't be worse than zero. So it, even if there were no zeros over here, I would still have more than p characters to start with, which is great. Um, this is in L3 too, b, uh, L3 also, because I'm just substituting in the number p for m and n, and that's all we needed. Okay, so then now we need to look at all decompositions of this string w into those three pieces. So look at all decompositions of w into x, y, and z according to the three two rules that x and y are of length at most p and y is not empty, meaning it has at least one character. So uh, we have the x, because this string starts off with p zeros, that means an x and y are both only zeros, but I don't know how many of them. So let's say x has alpha zeros, y has some number beta of zeros. I have no idea what the number is other than is at least one. And z is the whole rest of the string. Well, I'm gonna have p minus alpha minus beta, one to the p, and then all of the zeros at the end, which is that f function p of p. Okay. So then now what we need to do is to choose a value i such that this is not in the language anymore. So uh, choose an i such that technically uh, we need to choose functions f1 and f2 also such that, uh, let's see, such that x, y, i, z is not in um, it, oh, okay, so I'm abusing notation a little bit. So is not in L1 or L2. So the functions are gonna be different. Note that F1 corresponds to checking whether or not it's in uh, L1 or not, and F2 is whether or not it's in L2, okay? I'm abusing notation a bit because I'm, there's no F1 and F2 written here, but note that the F1 and F2 are corresponding to the function F that's written for what Z actually is. So let's actually compute what x, y to the i, z is. Well, that's gonna be 
uh, 0 to the alpha, because that's what the x thing is, then 0 to the i beta, and then just the z bit. So 0 to the p minus alpha minus beta, 1 to the p, and then I'm just going to write f here for now, because this is just a general case. Now let's check whether or not it's an L1 by substituting F1 in. So uh, the F1 thing, well, F1 is just adding the two values. So here, this is going to be in L1 if and only if. Uh, Let's see, so here what we have is that the number of zeros at the beginning plus the number of ones here equals, in this case, 2p. So what is the number of zeros here? Well, the alphas are gonna get killed off. So we're gonna have the number of zeros over here is gonna be p plus i beta minus beta. So p plus i beta minus beta plus the number of ones here which is just p, is equal to f1. Well, f1, remember, is just adding the two uh, parameters. So that's going to be equal to 2p. So here, we'll notice that we got 2p over here. So this is, oops. So this is if and only if i beta minus beta equals 0. And then you can check for yourself that this is if and only if i equal to 1. And like other proofs we've done before on this channel, we can we can choose a different value of i, let's choose it uh, 2. We can pick 0 or 3 or whatever, all those will work. So then now let's do the, the other one, that this thing is in L2, if and only if multiplying the number of zeros times the number of ones equals p times p, because remember the second language had the two parameters multiply each other. So here, let's do uh, so we have p plus i beta minus beta times p is equal to p squared. So note that p is at least 1, so we can divide by p on both sides. So we're going to get p plus i beta minus beta, no p there at the end. And we divide it by 1p on the right side, which we were allowed to do. And this is very, very similar to this. So this, again, is uh, true if and only if i is equal, to, oops, is equal to 1. And we can, again, choose the i parameter to be 2 also. Cool. So what you should see from this is that you can actually show that um, multiple languages that are very similar are all non-regular just by generalizing them, do the proof in the generalized case, and then specialize it based on the languages at the very end, instead of having to do all the work over and over and over. So here, L1 and L2 are not regular. I'm not gonna claim that L3 is not regular because it very well could be that uh, F of M and N could just be zero. So if we define this function to be zero, then this is, a, L3 is exactly the same as zero star one star because the zeros and ones have nothing to do with each other here. The only tying together that we have is in the zero bit in the original two languages. Whereas if we get rid of that right here, then we can't claim anything. And even if this was just M, you can actually show that this is, um, I'd have to think about it, but uh, so but you can't you can't claim anything based off of this. F could be technically anything here. So L three we can't claim is regular or not regular. It depends on F, but F L one and L two are definitely not regular.